Matthew Mercer is a shockingly divisive name and figure in the D&D community. And when you look at it, it's really not surprising as to why. He became so popular at the same time that D&D did, and he's almost synonymous with the name Dungeons & Dragons now. But does he deserve all that attention? Is he really a god amongst men? Or is he just a man? He's been idolized, he's been criticized, and he has the most enchanting eyes. Uh, so let's talk about them. Him. Let's talk about him. Him. It's a little bit surprising how much of a controversial figure Matt has become in the D&D community as a whole. When you look at it, the amount of people who keep eyes on him and with the fact that, yeah, his name almost is synonymous with D&D means that a lot of people are looking at him of both the older, younger, and middle generation of Dungeons & Dragons players. He is an inspiration to tons and a symbol of the change that a lot of people didn't like to others. It is this weird figure of a man who never asked for any of this, but became a symbol of all of it. So let's start with the first obvious elephant in the room, the Matthew Mercer effect. I don't really want to retread this. A lot of people have talked about it in their videos, and I've talked about it in some of my previous videos in the past, so I'll give the briefest description possible. The Matthew Mercer effect is essentially what happened when Matt started DMing in Critical Role and a lot of people started watching, and well, a lot of people just felt he set the bar too high for home games. Too high production value, too much effort put into the game, something that was unrealistic for most home games. And that was basically it. That's one of the largest reasons people don't like Matt, because, well, he changed the game of D&D as a whole, and you really can't get around that. I mean, seriously, if you take a look at it, Critical Role is one of the largest reasons that D&D blew up in the past several years. There were shows like Stranger Things, which had a heavy D&D element, and D&D 5e had come out recently, but it was really Critical Role that did give it that catalyst that started to blow it up. People were interested in D&D, there were things going on, but at a show with voice actors that were live playing D&D, hosted on Geek & Sundry, which was one of the larger geek channels at the time, it's not surprising whatsoever that that began to cause D&D to blow up. And so because of that, as 5e began to get huge, so did Critical Role. And the two could not be separated from each other. And so a lot of people began to get frustrated with Critical Role existing. I, you know, see comments on the internet about the work that I do and the show. And that just, you know, in a weird fucked up pushing a bruise kind of way sometimes i'll seek out to reinforce that voice in the back of my head that says see you you aren't worth anything see you 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 aren't you know you aren't creating or producing anything of value and this person sees it because it set this new standard or expectation that had not super been there in dnd there was an expectation that all home games were different and games were run differently and that was okay and that was cool and different editions could be played at tables and that was all right but when Critical Role blew up, suddenly it was all about 5e and everybody wanted their tables to be like Critical Role. All right, man, look, you don't need to go overboard here. Matt's a great DM, but you don't need to copy him in order for us to have a fun time. You call that copying? And because Matt was the DM, of course, a lot of the attention began to center on him, asking what it was different about his game. Was he really that great of a dungeon master? I want to make something incredibly clear. I love Matt. Matt is one of my largest inspirations, and I will get to that in a little bit here. But I don't believe that he deserves the amount of attention that he's received, at least in the form of looking at him as if he is a perfect example of a dungeon master. A large portion of my audience is Critical Role fans. So Critters, to you specifically, I hope you understand Matt's an amazing DM. He's far from perfect and not the best. I love what he does, but nobody's a perfect dm and so it's not worth idolizing him over that and also to be perfectly honest that's coming from somebody who used to idolize him growing up trying to learn how to be a dungeon master so you know take that with a grain of salt point is however he was a very good dungeon master but that's not why everybody was paying attention i have come to one specific very intentional conclusion critical role is not the standard that people think they're going for. Yes, people do want their games to be like Critical Role. They do like the idea of Critical Role at their table. But the truth is, deep down, there's something else going on. When they look at Critical Role and they want their games to be like it, they don't want the incredible sets. They don't want the amazingly painted miniatures. They don't even necessarily want the incredibly professional voice acting. No, what they're really looking for is a game where everybody at the table, DM and players, care about each other more than they care about the game. And this is where we get into talking specifically about Matt. 
Have you ever noticed on all those D&D horror stories that you see, there's one specific thread. I'm talking about D&D green techs or the different YouTube channels that just talk about D&D horror stories all the time. The one thread that runs through all of those stories is that there was a player who cared more about the game than the people at the table. They cared more about their characters, what was going on with them, what was happening. They cared more about the fact that they had something going on in the game more than the players at the table who were there with them to also have a good time. When you look at a dungeon master, the dungeon master has a certain amount of authority and that shouldn't be a surprise. The dungeon master is a very important figure when it comes to playing the game. Everybody at the table has a social contract that understands that you have given more authority to them than everybody else. And so when you look at that specifically, and you look at Matt, and then you look at the atmosphere that the Critical Role table has, you understand the importance of Matthew Mercer when it comes to Critical Role. But in the early days, especially if it's a new game with new players, that's that, that's part of the process is feeling each other out and finding out you know, what works and what really uh, excites and inspires the players at the table. So it's just checking in and it's easy for a player to get frustrated when they feel like they're not playing optimally or they're making mistakes, but that's what people do. What he's done is he had fostered a community with his table that understands that the game is not as important as the other people around it. If something goes on in their personal lives, Matt immediately works to make sure that the game is okay without them, that their character is going to be okay, that it's all right that they can't be there and he'll make it work so that they can come back and have a great time next time. When a character dies, he makes sure to handle that, but then he also cares deeply for the players after that happens. He understands the loss that occurred and he makes sure that he's going to be there for them. <laughs> I'm sorry. Could be, could be Is that you turn it off? Does it sound like, is it like your colon is pulsing? Yeah. Do you want me to turn it off? Is it making you uncomfortable? No way. You got to leave. Okay. No, you got to leave. Yeah, no. It's supposed to make um, us uncomfortable. When something happens in the game, his first thought and everybody else at the table is what happens to the players. They care about each other. They watch for each other. They check in on each other. And that is because Matt has fostered that environment. Now, don't get me wrong. The players are incredible and they're amazing and they're all great. But Critical Role would not have done well if Matt had not worked to create that environment with them to make sure that everybody at the table felt comfortable caring about each other. And having Talson swoop in at one point and do something and they'll go, I didn't know you could do that. And just watching their minds blown repeatedly. I was like, this is, this is joy to me. Com like pure undistilled joy. A DM will set the tone. And even if you have the most amazing players in the world, a bad DM will not allow that atmosphere to occur. And it should not be surprising whatsoever that that was something he was incredibly focused and importantly caring about. Why? Well, look at any of his interviews. I have so much to who I am today uh, to being able to explore who I wanted to be in those spaces. I wanted to be someone who was more sure of themselves. Mm. Still working on that. Um, I wanted to be somebody that could stand up for people that couldn't protect themselves. Um, I wanted to be a problem solver and be useful. I think in some facet, there was trying to find out who I wanted to be, and there's some facet of knowing that while I was uncomfortable in, in being in this body, I was far more comfortable in being in the body, the perceived body of these other characters, mm -hmm. whether they be PCs, NPCs. There, there was kind of a therapeutic aspect of that there for a long time. Matt has been through a lot in his life, and though while he will be humble and say that he is not, the man has gone through some stuff. And when you look at what he's overcome and the things that he's tried to handle in his life, suddenly you understand that one of his most important factors is making sure other people do not have to deal with what he has dealt with. And that is one of the most inspiring things I've ever seen. See, Matt understands one thing, that we're all human. And as humans, we have conflict that are directly in front of us. And this translates into the game that he does as well. When he presents problems in front of the players, he doesn't just present a problem for the character. He presents an opportunity for the player to explore something about themselves. He knows his players to a T. He has been friends with them for years, and even when they have guest characters there, he is very intent to know about what they care about so that he could present them with something important. Rock. You are stronger than this. This thing that binds you. Where do you find your strength? And my friends. The darkness around you immediately shatters, and you can see now your friends off to the side, kind of keeping their weapons ready. Um, the entirety of, of Groon's posture has dropped. And he just bows before you. 
When Ashley Birch was at the table, he presented an enemy she was terrified of because that's what she wanted to explore. And he made sure that she had the opportunity to be able to overcome that. When Ashley constantly had to keep leaving the table and not be able to participate, he presented an issue for Yasha that when Ashley was back, she would be able to confront that in a way that also compared to the exact real life problems that she had. She understood that Yasha kept having to leave the campaign, but so did Ashley. And so when Ashley came back, he presented issues which caused the rest of the table to confront and confirm to Ashley, as well as Yasha, that it was okay. That they still cared about her, that it was all right that she couldn't be there because she was important to them. Matt is so incredibly good at taking a look at his players and presenting them with something that is important to them. Matt is great at voices, don't get me wrong. He's great at making sets, he's great at homebrew, though there will be many who argue with that statement. The point is, he's not perfect. He makes a lot of mistakes. Mistakes which, when I watch Critical Role, I sit there and yell at the screen wondering what the heck he's doing. I'll be honest about that. But at the end of the day, Brennan Lee Mulligan is an amazing DM and I think sets an atmosphere way better than Matt does. No offense, Matt, if you end up watching this. And I think Abria Iyengar is incredible at having a lot more goofy fun than Matt is. But that's okay. Each DM has their own strengths, and I stress that so much on my channel, but do you know what I think Matt's true core strength is? It is something that I find more valuable than any other DM I've ever watched. Matt's true core strength is the fact that at the end of the day, his players are his utmost priority, and he makes his games to allow them to experience life. Matt's priority is his people. And I think that is one of the most admirable things you could possibly do. Anytime that you hear him talk about his players, he's so crucially invested in making sure that they are being fulfilled. And by doing so, he is making sure that they are his priority. And over time, I, I just fell in love with each of them. Like maybe it, they went from being these, these strangers that I hoped to provide a good time for to becoming my family. Like we became so close. And I'm, I'm so thankful for all the time that we get to build up in this and have our Mimosa Sundays playing mm -hmm. in Lord Travis's house or rushing everyone over to our tiny apartment again to, to play. And just just watching all the pretenses of, of industry and business fall away. And in this space, we were just a bunch of doofy people making things up, rolling dice, and, and just enjoying a good, you know, six, eight hour weekend day together mm -hmm. before going back to the rest of our responsibilities. And because of this, his players then make him the priority. It is a beautiful relationship of how people can give and take with each other without being toxic about it, without constantly causing each other to resent one another. To be honest, I look at Matt and I'm inspired by him because he cares about people. People are his priority. And in his games, that shines through. Yes, he focuses a lot on representation and that makes some people angry, but he's not doing that because he wants some token points or he wants to be considered a cool figure in the community. He's doing it because he has experienced hatred in his life. He has experienced being the focus of people who just don't understand better or are ignorant. And he doesn't want people to feel alone like he felt alone. He has experienced hating himself, having issues, not liking who he is, feeling like an imposter. And he cares about that. And he wants other people to not feel like they also have to feel that way. He knows what he's gone through and he refuses to be bitter about it and instead has focused on making sure that other people don't have to feel alone in those issues. And to be incredibly clear, I'm not speaking just out of nowhere here. This is a very personal experience. When I first started DMing, I had no clue what I was doing, but there was a certain point about seven sessions in where I realized that DMing was one of the best things I'd ever done. It was so impactful and meaningful to me. And you wanna know why? Because at the end of the session, I looked around and I saw all my players. They were so excited about the session we had just run. They were just immediately jumping up and talking with each other about it, excited about what had happened. They began to discuss what would happen next. They were asking me questions. And when I shuffled them all out of my tiny little apartment, I just felt happy. Happy that I had given something to them in a time where we were all really stressed out. It was after this point that I found a lot of the Critical Role stuff. It was after this point that I started to look through a lot of what Matt did as a DM, and eventually, years later, I would watch 
the very same interview that I've been presenting in this video. And there was a very key moment that made me realize why I was so excited to DM. It was a moment that made me realize how important it was to me. I hope that any of those kids that grew up unhappy with themselves, unsure of themselves, trying to find some reason to stick around. Um, if my stories, if my work can somehow help them through those dark patches, that's more than I could have ever hoped on a broad legacy standpoint. I like to provide safe spaces and safe stories for people to create. I don't want I don't want to create something to be consumed. I mm -hmm. want to create something that invites and inspires people to carry that chain of creation. And so if I can continue to do that in whatever paths of my career might be from here on out. It's fulfilling. That'd be yeah, damn fulfilling. I don't think Matt will see this video, though I do know that some of the Critical Role cast has seen some of my videos. So I very much hope that he sees this one because I think this is very important. Matt, everything you've said about being an imposter, about not having confidence in yourself, about just wanting people to not have to suffer, it inspired me. It inspired me to make this channel. It inspired me to keep persevering. It inspired me to keep running my games despite the amount of things in my life that have just continually gone wrong. So to you specifically, thank you for being incredible. I don't believe you're a god amongst men. I don't think that you are the absolute best DM in the world but I think that you have touched me. And I hope that even just that means something because I know how important it is to know that you're making a difference and you've made a difference to me and the incredible people in my community and all of the Critter community. So thank you. And to everybody else, I don't think that Matt is the best DM in the world. You can learn from him and he is so skilled. He is incredible, but he is not the best. I think that there are things that Brennan does better. I think that there are things that Griffin McElroy does better, or Brie Iyengar does better. There are so many incredible DMs out there, but I think you can learn from them. Please don't try to be them. Be yourself because you are incredible. You're amazing. And everybody has something to give, but it will only be able to be given once you have the confidence in yourself that you are worth something and you are all worth something. And thank you to Matt and the Critical Role community for helping us all continue to feel like we can make a difference. Go out into the world and play your role. I'd like to give thank you to the Divine Bastards, Big D the Cool Guy, BKBW, Clark Smith, Diet Blue, Duplicolor, Frostios, Manifestering, Noctua, Rhea Rose, Rocky, Sorit, Supreme Court, Tin Eye, Void Mystic, Volpe Nico, and Zombies Were People Too. We wouldn't be able to do what we do without you guys, and you mean the absolute world to us.